I would rather die trying than let injustice have a field day. I know injustice firsthand. Physical violence, including sexual violence of different kinds, state-sponsored violence. And I know what it means when you wish that there was just one person that would remember that you're a human being and stand with you, stand for you, stand by you. And for the last 20 years, my patient population have been women and girls. I have been privileged enough to meet all types of women. And there has always been one constant thread, the forms of discrimination, the acts of violence perpetrated against these women. And this, in fact, given my role as a primary obstetrician and gynecologist, exposed me to these cases and started my journey in activism. My activism story started, I think, as soon as I was born. I've always been like this. And uh, when people say to me, ask me, how do, how do I get to be this fearless? I always wonder, is there any other way to be? It's always about speaking against injustice, about when I say anything that it's wrong, I'm going to talk. And I always said it, I said it as it is. And even as a child, I realized that adults were happy when my truth favored them, and they were not happy when it didn't favor them. The abduction of the Chiba girls in 2014 led me into activism. I had been abused at 18, so when the Chiba girls were abducted, I just literally transferred all of those fights that I could not muster up on that October 8th. I transferred it onto the fight for the Chibo girls. And that is how it has just grown. I was speaking up for my people and it exposed me to how bad the situation is where we are, how human rights abuses in Nigeria have become the norm and that at this point, Keeping quiet was not an option. I had already thrown my heart into the ring and I had to continue. Speaking up for these women, making a case for them, highlighting, exposing the indignities to which they are subjected on a daily basis makes a whole lot of difference. Whatever um, success story we have in terms of um, advocacy, making policy changes, that is my motivation because it tells me that in spite of the challenges, yes, there is hope. My greatest motivation and what keeps me going, especially in dark days, is the realization that you live life once and also the realization that a life in which you don't pay the price for what you believe in is not worth living. The passion, it's my motivation. I am very passionate about what I do. And I believe that we can have a better society. And I believe that I have a role to play in, in doing that. And so anytime I look back to that commitment that I've made to myself to ensure that we do what it takes to have a better life for the people, better life for women, better life for girls, it keeps me going. You know, um, for women activists in Nigeria, we've done a lot. What we're enjoying today, it's been years of hard work of women, our foremothers as we call it. Many activisms across the world that have yielded positive results are initiated and led by women. People needed to stand up and if it's going to take me to be the starting point that let it be enough was enough for me and this undue intimidation and oppression finally had to stop. If Nigeria must continue in that trajectory, we must again be led by women. And that's our role. We're the catalyst, the change agents. We're the ones we can get away with making change happen. So my hope for the future of women activism is that women will continue to work together. Women will continue to rise up together and continue to cause the change that we hope to see. Rape, sexual violence, gender-based violence, it's a systemic problem. And because it's a systemic problem, you have to address it with a solution that is systemic, that is fully survivor-centered. You have to look at her and her primary needs. You have to look at her family and her community. And so you have to look at preventative measures. To ensure that women are safe, women um, do not have to fear going to the market or do not have to feel unsafe in their own homes, do not have to lose jobs because their bosses are sexually harassing them. I just want to see women live a free life. We should form a large movement, a movement that can help to change things. 
a movement whereby when we speak, the people in authority will listen because we have the numbers. What I expect Nigerian women is, nobody should think that I alone cannot change situation. In fact, if there is anything in this world that has changed the whole world itself, is the idea and then the leadership of only one single person. My aspiration for women like activism in Nigeria is that we get to the point where we can begin to celebrate every micro win. It doesn't have to be that huge win. I know we're striving for equality and opportunities, expansion of spaces, but we're doing so much. Some of us have sold ourselves out to the movement and it's time we begin to celebrate ourselves. To the young Amazon out there, I want to say that your voice is too critical to be subjected to a culture of silence. You've got a voice, you've got a power. What you only need to do is to activate that power. I'd like to remind us that a silent mouth is a silenced destiny. Every bad thing that exists in society today is what has been permitted to happen. And so if you choose to join the group of the silent ones, then you're permitting the bad things to continue happening. You should learn to find your voice. You should learn to stand for what is right and what you believe in. Once you can do that and you're comfortable and confident within your personal space, it's like a light. It will shine. It will beam. Do it afraid. We all do. Every day we are afraid and we do it. So can you. And when you do it, you will get results. You will be the change that you want to see. You have a voice. Use it. Don't wait to be invited to the table. Create your own table and invite others.